Number 44, calculate the equilibrium constant at the temperature given. So then we have this balanced equation. So we have I2 solid plus Cl2 gas yields 2 ICL, and they gave us the temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. So from this given temperature, we want to try to find the equilibrium constant. And remember, the equilibrium constant is always a capital K. Now there's a lot of different K values, right? There's Ka, there's Kb, there's Kc, Kp, right? It doesn't really matter in this case. I could probably guesstimate that there's going to be a Kp value here because I see a lot of gases, and gases usually have a pressure amount. But it doesn't matter because there's only one uh, equilibrium constant equation that corresponds with the temperature. And that's this equation down here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to raise this up. Right, this is the ultimate equation that we're going to use because here's my equilibrium constant, K equals, and there's my temperature. So I just have to find out the other variables and then we're good to go. So equilibrium constant equals the E, which is on the calculator, and the E button is all raised to the negative delta G divided by R times T. So let's plug in those variables. Well, they didn't give me an R value, but that's okay because R is always constant especially since we're using energy values, delta G is a Gibbs free energy, the R value here is gonna be 8.314. And let me write that again, 8.314. The units are joules per mole times Kelvin. So these units dictate what units are allowed for delta G and for the temperature. So for example, Kelvin, right? K is Kelvin, but uh-oh, they gave it to us in Celsius. That's okay, because I can convert 100 degrees Celsius easily into a Kelvin value, right? Celsius to Kelvin, all we have to do is just plus 273. More specifically, we'll add 273.15, just to kind of get a more exact value. So 273 plus 100 is 373.15, and that's gonna be the temperature, okay. So it looks like the only variable left is the delta G notch. Now, delta G notch, right, this little degree sign at the top means notch, it means standard. So some of you might be saying, oh, okay, I know how to get that because I could just go in the back of a textbook, go to the appendix values, get the delta Gs for these uh, substances, products minus reactants, and plug it in. That would be awesome. But if you're using those appendix values at the back of the book for delta G, they got to be at 25 degrees Celsius. It's a very specific temperature. We are not at that temperature. We're at 100 degrees Celsius. So the delta G is going to be a little bit different. So now we have to say to ourselves, well, how can I get that delta G from a higher temperature? What is the formula there? And that's the second formula that I have down at the bottom. Delta G equals the enthalpy, delta H, minus T times the entropy, which is the delta S. So here's the link between G and T. But now, uh, they didn't give us a delta H, and they didn't give us a delta S for the you know, whole equation. So that's why I went into the back of the textbook to find out those values. It's, it's um, quite okay, it's okay, definitely okay, to get those values delta H values and the delta S values and plug it into this tape, you know, plug it into this equation. So that's exactly what I did. I went in the back of the textbook, I found out all the H values for each substance, and I found all the S values. Now we have to find out the sum, right? What's the overall delta H for the whole entire reaction? And what's the overall delta H for delta S for the whole entire reaction? Now let's start with delta H. Now what's the formula to find out a, a whole delta H for a reaction. It's this right here, right? Delta H for a whole entire reaction is the sum, that's this little thing, sum means addition. So you're gonna add up all of the delta H's of the products and subtract the sum, add up all the delta H's of the reactants. And just know that Rxn is reaction. So now, are these values going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, that goes by the balanced equation. Look at those coefficients. There was one I2, there was one Cl2, and there's two ICLs. 
For every value that you found your delta H, you're going to multiply that by those values. So I'm going to times this one by one. It's just good practice, even though one times zero is zero, right? But here, you have to times it by two. Now, sum them all up. You got to add them up. So add up all the reactants. You don't really have to add up the products because there's only one product. So literally, it was I2 plus Cl2. So plus over there, but zero plus zero is a total of zero. And now let's just find out what the total for this is. So two times 17.78. Uh, two times 17.78, that looks good. We get 35.56. And now here are our values to plug in for our equation. So let's go for it. Delta H for the whole entire reaction is the sum of the products, 35.56 minus zero. So this one's pretty easy. Delta H to so the whole entire enthalpy for the reaction is endothermic. It's a positive value, 35.56. Now units, the units in the back of the textbook is kilojoule per mole but since you multiply each one by how many moles you have, the moles cancel out. And the units here are just kilojoules. So one answer down. Let's do the same for the delta S's. Now it's great because we could use the same formula, which is this one, right? But instead of saying, okay, I got all H's, I could get rid of all these and just put S's. So now my delta S for the whole entire reaction is the sum of all the S products minus the sum of all the S reactants. So let's do the same thing. I got to take each value that I found in the back of the textbook and I got to times by one, one and two. Sum up the blues, sum up the reactants. This we just got to times by two. So let's see, we got 116.14 plus 223.1. Okay, so for the reactant side, we get a total of 339.24. And then for the product side, two times 247.44. We get four, whoop, that's supposed to be in red. 494.88. Now let's find it out. Delta S for the whole entire reaction would be the sum of the products which was 494.88 minus the sum of the reactants, which was what, 339.24. Okay, delta S for the whole entire reaction is, I'm just gonna take that value, press enter, grab it, that's why I love the TI-84, minus, I'm gonna grab the 339, beautiful, press enter, and we get 155.64 units for this. Back of the book is joules per mole times Kelvin. But since we multiplied by how many moles we had, the moles go bye-bye. And now you're just left with joules per Kelvin. All right. So now we just found a delta H. We found that delta S. We have the temperature, right? We converted it already, 373.15. So now we can just find the delta G. So I'm just going to take this, put it over here, get rid of this, and let's plug in. Delta G would be, now, delta H is in kilojoules, delta S is in joules. Uh-oh. They have to be the same unit of energy. Whether we convert kilojoules to joules or joules to kilojoules, right, which one do we do? Well, I would ultimately look back at your, you know, formula that you have to use. Keep in mind, the R value gives those units. The R value said, I need that in joules, right? Delta G has to be in joules. So this guy's okay. So what I'll do is I'll just convert the kilojoules into joules. Kilojoules into joules, we just times by a thousand. Similarly, you could take the decimal, move it over to the right three times. So this would be the same as three, five, Five six zero thirty five thousand five hundred and sixty joules, and that's the number that I'm gonna plug in for delta H. So we got thirty five thousand five hundred and sixty 
minus the temperature, which was 373.15, it's got to be in Kelvin, times by the delta S value, 155.64. I could plug this all into the calculator at once. So let's see, 35560 minus the temperature, 373, 373.15, times by, I'm going to just grab that number, Okay, so it's spontaneous, it's a negative value. And since this is not the, the actual value that we're looking for at the end of the day, we're still looking for equilibrium constant, I'm not gonna round. And this now would be in joules. So look at that, we got a delta G value now. It's negative 22,517.066. And now let's plug it in. K equals equilibrium constant equals E, all raised to the negative fraction. We got the G value up on top. It's a negative, 22,517.066. And then you have those two values at the bottom. You got the R value, which is 8.314. And you got your temperature, which was 373.15. Now, what I would do is I would just clean this up. Let's just simplify all this into one number. Now, remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, right? So maybe what we can do is we could put a negative, if you want, to just plug that in, right? A negative with a negative is a positive. So the calculator will understand that. Divided by the 8.314. And now, since I'm not using parentheses here, and I still want to tell the calculator that I want this in the denominator, I have to press divide again. If I press multiply without parentheses, uh, that means that it's gonna be in the numerator. So there you go. I'm just making sure that I plugged in all the right numbers. 373.15 looks good to me. This is still not the, the end answer, so I'm not going to round. So 7.25802 with more numbers at the end, right? So, here we go, equilibrium constant. We're gonna do second LN, that's the E button. And then I'm just gonna grab the whole number and press enter. And now it seems like the final value should be maybe four sig figs, because we rounded the R value. So I guess I could put this into scientific notation. 1.419, 1.419. Times 10 to the one, let's see. One, two, three. No units for equilibrium constant, and that is your final answer. So, whew, a lot of work for this one, but if you can get through the steps and you understand why you know each step is happening, you guys are golden, all right? I think there's more questions coming your way. There's always more questions coming your way. Um, more lessons to be learned. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Thanks for being part of this community. You guys have been awesome. And I hope you guys are having a great day out there. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.